Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be another in the typography series, typography 101, if you will. Uh, last time we took a look at kerning. We also took a look at tracking and how those two work together and have similarities. And today we're gonna be taking a look at letting, not leading, and also widows and orphans. Say what? Let's get into it. <laughs> All right, so we covered kerning and we kind of went over tracking as well. Uh, just to be clear, kerning is the space between two letters. Tracking is the space between multiple words as well as the letters inside of those words. So there's just a higher level adjustment here inside of Figma. Now, letting. Uh, letting actually is an old school print term that comes from way back when, when we used to use printing presses to do books and things like that, or newspapers, the individual letters would be laid out, the metal letters would be laid out on the printing press in order to print documents. And letting comes from the lead that those printers would use to put in between individual sentences in order to give it breathable room. So you're letting, not leading, heard that used is the space here. It's the individual space between sentences. And where this comes in is again, breathability and usability of your text. Is it easy to parse? Is it easy to quickly read? Something like this. And this is where it can be found over here. It's called line height, just another word for letting. So say we have like a really squished paragraph and I've seen this way too many times in new designers work is they just don't adjust the letting. So here you can see, if you try to read this, it's just really hard because the sentences are so close together. It's just a design aesthetic thing that makes this harder to read. And a lot of times you'll see people do this because they get a little bit of room back here. So a lot of times in your design, you may not have room to have extra text flow or whatever, but it's always better to do something else at a scroll bar, uh, make that text flow to another part of the document. You don't wanna have tight letting like this because it just makes it hard to read. So you come over here to the letting line height adjustment, 101%. So let's go up a little more. Let's try like 112, 115. See, again, it's just a very like iterative thing. And a lot of times with designs, I'll sit here and just keep going up until I feel it's, I just have this feeling it looks good, it looks breathable, it looks readable. So here you can see, even just this is a lot easier to read than this. I'm sure there's tons of documentation out there and articles and research written on this if you wanna dig into it, but there's just something about how humans parse a paragraph that it's easier to read when it has good kerning, has good tracking, and it has good letting. Just makes the, the overall design feel a lot better and a lot easier to understand. Okay, and last one on the hit list for today is this one that I'm sure you've been wondering, what are widows and orphans? And if you haven't already looked it up out of sheer morbid curiosity. It is a term in typography layout that refers to this little guy. So this is actually an orphan, uh, or this one is a widow. And the reason that those are bad in design is it's just harder, again, to read the text when you have things like this happen in your design. Naturally, as humans, we're reading through this and we get to uh, this crazy jargon, um, metis, lorit, terpus, in, and then all of a sudden you have to jump to the next line, your eye has to move up there, and then there's one word, fermentum, and then you go on to the next paragraph. And not only does it not visually look good and kind of creates this weird, we no longer have this nice, like, flat top now, on our paragraph, it's kind of just broken up with this weird negative white space here. So it just causes some issues, but it also just makes it harder for the reader. So, you know, there's lots of ways that we can adjust this. Um, again, this is a little hard to show inside of Figma because we don't have these flowing paragraphs, but what you could do is come into here and start messing with some of the other things we've already talked about. So may we adjust the letter spacing? Well, we can now see we have plenty of room to fit that word. So normally in a print design program, this would flow to that other paragraph, but here we're just going to add it. Look how much better that looks. Uh, it's just nice and flat on the top. It visually looks better. It's easier to read. You you end this sentence and then you can ni nicely transition to this next paragraph. Just makes it overall better and easier to read. So now let's try to fix one of the widows. So again, this can be either done through your letter spacing, but again, we want to be very aware of not in Figma. I try not to go below negative 2% or positive 2%. Uh, it just makes it a little harder to discern when your eyes looking at one that has 0% letter spacing and one that has negative 2. You start getting into like a negative 5 or something like that. It's way too 
cramped, first of all, but then it's also very clearly different from this to this. And that can also cause readability problems. So you really want to have equal spacing and equal letter spacing and kerning for all of your paragraphs in a document or a layout uh, of a website because it just makes it easier to tell that you've been messing with this stuff. So I try to stay at, you know, maybe even negative one or plus one percent if you can. So that's one way to fix it is letter spacing. You can also fix it with size. Uh, so you could dump all of your paragraph body text down to maybe 22. And then you're going to see all of your paragraphs adjust to kind of pull in some of these widows and orphans to make things a little more readable because these occur when there's not enough space on a line and it bleeds to the next. That's another way to do it. And lastly, and this is kind of a, a weird one, but sometimes you may go in and rewrite the text. So maybe this elementum word, let's say it's birthdays or something, and maybe we can just shorten it to event or something like that, which gives us less space, which will naturally make the paragraph flow up. And that's probably not the best example, but sometimes you'll have these long, complex words, especially in something like documentation, where it could probably be replaced with something a little probably easier to understand by the user, first of all, but also shorter in content, which allows your paragraphs to flow more naturally. And that's a wrap on letting and widows and orphans. So hopefully you now have a little better understanding of those terms what they mean, and how to avoid things like widows and orphans in your design moving forward to make them overall stronger designs. If you did enjoy this video, make sure that you like the video and also subscribe to the channel and then hit the bell if you wanna be notified of future videos in the typography series as well as all the other videos I cover here on the channel. Next time on the typography series, we're gonna be taking a look at serif versus sans serif fonts, when to choose which, when to use what font, and maybe just a couple little tools to help you pick better fonts as well. So looking forward to that one. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate your time and we'll see you on the next video.